Hello, welcome. Recently, we had an update in RPCS3, the PS3 emulator, which brought several improvements, including the stability of Gran Turismo 5 and 6 games, as mentioned in the video linked in the card. However, to me, this update seemed a bit limited, considering the promising potential of this emulator. That's why I decided to perform performance tests on over 20 games, including those that already ran well and others that had poor performance. The goal was to check if any game that was previously unplayable now became at least playable, as well as to find out if the improvements were only for the Gran Turismo series. And the answer is yes. In my tests, I observed improvements in other games as well. But before checking the video and seeing the performance in the games, I would like to ask you to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy receiving news about the emulation world. Why spend a fortune on a console when you can have practically all of them on your PC? This video is offered by the members and Patreons of the channel. Thank you for your support. Before we start the actual tests, it's important to keep in mind that RPCS3 is an emulator that relies heavily on the single-thread performance of a processor. So, having an RTX 4090 graphics card or a processor with 56 cores won't make a significant difference. What matters most here is the performance per core. If you have a better processor than mine in that regard, it's likely that your performance will be even better. All our tests were conducted with unlocked FPS for benchmarking purposes. Some games do not allow unlocking the FPS, and others have a limit of 120 FPS. Additionally, it's important to mention that practically all games require specific configurations to work properly. You can find this information within the emulator itself. Just right-click on the desired game, select, check game compatibility, and click on the game name to open the settings. The RPCS3 development team has strict criteria for the compatibility list. They consider games that have high hardware demands as in-game status, which means they are not yet fully optimized in the emulator. However, with a good processor, it is possible to play some of these games, such as God of War 3 and Gran Turismo 5. All tests were recorded at 1080p resolution. If there are any discrepancies in the tests, I will inform you later. With that said, let's proceed with the tests. Starting with Azura's Wrath, the game has been playable for quite some time, but it required some compromises, such as disabling the motion blur effect and other features. In this test, we enabled all features, including anti-aliasing. The game maintains a very good frame rate, fluctuating between 80 and 100 FPS when there are multiple enemies on the screen. In calmer environments, it easily reaches the maximum of 120 FPS, which is the cap for this game. Another game that is limited to this console generation and was released for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and the handheld PSP is Dante's Inferno. It has been considered playable for some time now, but previously it had audio issues in certain parts of the game. Now, in version 0.28 of the emulator, everything is working correctly. Unfortunately, it was not possible to unlock the FPS in this game as the mod was not available for the specific version I downloaded. However, if you've been waiting to play Dante's Inferno, now is probably the best time to do so. Here we encounter a problem with God of War Ascension, one of the games that still requires high requirements to be considered playable. On my PC, I consider it practically impossible to play. In quieter and enclosed areas of the game, I achieved a frame rate above 60 FPS. However, in larger areas with about 4 enemies, the frame rate drops to 23 FPS. For more demanding players, this certainly compromises the immersion in the game, as if the frame rate drops below 30 FPS, the game will be played in a slow manner. If you have a mid-range PC, I recommend waiting a little longer before playing this game. I have even seen tests with the i7-10700K processor, which still had many performance issues. However, I must emphasize that processors with support for AVX 512 can run practically all games in RPCS3. Check the manufacturer's page to see if your processor supports this instruction. Another epic game from this console is God of War 3. As you can see in the background, it's a fast-paced action game with expansive environments, multiple enemies on the screen, and giant bosses, all finely animated with many particles and effects at the same time. However, this game still demands high-end hardware, and on the official emulator website, it is listed as in-game status. I've heard reports from several people who were able to complete the game without issues. 
I personally played for over 2 hours without experiencing crashes or major problems that affected my enjoyment. It's important to note that if the game doesn't meet your performance expectations, it's still possible to lower some graphical elements to improve performance. For example, disabling the fog layer can provide a significant performance boost, and turning off MLAA, morphological anti-aliasing, a anti-aliasing method used by Sony in this game, can also help. Now let's talk about the game that was the highlight of this update, Gran Turismo 5. It still requires a fairly robust hardware, especially in terms of the processor, and it is listed as, in-game, on the official emulator website. However, I have accumulated over 21 hours of gameplay and have only experienced one crash during the initial startup when compiling the initial shaders. After that incident, I haven't had major issues. One tip I would like to share is that if you are experiencing slowdowns at the start of races, it is recommended to disable anti-aliasing, as the AA methods used by Sony during the development of games for the PlayStation 3 are quite demanding and may be difficult to execute, even on modern computers. There are cheats available to disable the FPS limit, but I have tried using them in various ways and couldn't get them to work without the game speeding up. Another important point to mention is that each car in the game has at least a dozen shaders, which means that when running the game after having completed most of the content, it can take up to 20 minutes for the emulator to load all the necessary shaders. The PlayStation 3 is known for being a great console for hack and slash games, and an example of that is the game Heavenly Sword. Although the game was already playable before, it had some minor issues. However, with the latest updates, it is now possible to run the game without making any significant graphical reductions. For the most part, you can enjoy a frame rate above 60 FPS, even in dense areas with many enemies. This provides a smooth and immersive experience when playing Heavenly Sword. Another exclusive series for this console is the famous Infamous. I tested these games in previous versions, and the performance was quite unsatisfactory, with frame drops to less than 20 FPS on some occasions. However, with the improvements in version 0.28 of the emulator, I noticed a significant improvement in the performance of these games. In the first game of the series, I can say that it is now in the playable status on my PC. The frame rate stays above 30 FPS most of the time, providing a relatively good experience. However, there are still some issues, such as audio glitches at certain moments and the absence of some particles. As for Infamous 2, I believe the game still needs some improvements to be considered playable on my PC. In more open areas, the frame rate hovers around 23 FPS, which already causes some discomfort. During gameplay, especially in environments with many particles and frenetic action, the emulator struggles to maintain a stable frame rate. Despite that, I'm happy to mention that these games are no longer causing random crashes like before. It's important to remember that both games are considered in-game by the RPCS3 development team, which means they are still in the improvement phase. Another exclusive to the PlayStation 3 and a must-play game for anime fans is JSTAR's Victory VS Plus. I had also tested this game previously, and it suffered from frequent frame drops and random crashes. However, now the performance seems to be quite solid. The game maintains a frame rate close to 120 FPS most of the time, although it's obvious that you won't be able to play at that speed. But if you are waiting for improvements from the emulator to play JSTARS, now is the ideal time to enjoy the game. The frame drops have been significantly reduced, providing a smoother and uninterrupted experience. This performance stability is especially important in a fighting game with lots of action and intense movement like JSTARS Victory VS Plus. Here we have probably one of the most visually impressive games of this generation, Killzone 2. Although I haven't recorded any tests previously, I had already tested it on my PC, and unfortunately, it is still far from being playable. The game experiences frequent frame drops, and worst of all, input delay. Whether in open environments or indoor areas, regardless of the frame rate, the input delay is terrible. Any action performed seems to take a fraction of a second to happen in the game, severely compromising gameplay and the overall experience. It's important to mention that Killzone 2 is a demanding game in terms of hardware, and the emulator is still unable to provide a smooth enough experience to play it without major issues. Significant advancements in emulator optimization are needed for games like this to be properly enjoyed on PC. Therefore, if you're eager to play Killzone 2, I recommend waiting for future emulator updates and performance improvements to ensure a satisfactory experience without frame drops and input delay. Lollipop Chainsaw is one of the games on this list that is close to receiving a remake. 
Even before this potential update, the game already had very good performance and was fully playable. Any issues or difficulties the game presents can be easily resolved through basic settings. Personally, I'm almost at the end of the game and haven't had any major problems or significant performance drops. The experience has been smooth and enjoyable so far. However, it's up to you to decide whether you prefer to play the original version or wait for the remake, which may not be released due to the crisis Warner Bros. games is facing. If you're a fan of the game and are looking forward to an updated and enhanced experience, it may be worth waiting for the remake if it's confirmed. On the other hand, if you don't mind updated graphics and want to enjoy the game now, you can choose to play the original version, which already offers a good experience. Although I own an Xbox 360 and can play this game on it, the performance on the base consoles is quite poor. That's why I'm looking forward to the day when I can enjoy a decent experience on PC. Unfortunately, our PCS3 still has poor performance with various rendering issues for distant objects. The same goes for the Xenia emulator. Therefore, at least for now, we will have to wait longer to play Midnight Club Los Angeles, and unfortunately, we have no information from Rockstar about a possible sequel to this franchise. It's a shame because it would be wonderful to see a continuation of this series. If you're a fan of Super Smash Bros., you'll definitely enjoy getting to know PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. This game is Sony's version of that fighting style with iconic characters from the company, such as Kratos and Dante. Here, you can finally discover who would be stronger in a battle between them. Although the game demands a lot from the hardware, it is already listed as in-game in RPCS3 and can be considered fully playable. Even with some frame drops in certain stages, after 4 hours of gameplay, I haven't experienced any crashes or major issues. It's a great option for fighting game enthusiasts and fans of Sony characters. Ratchet Clank Future, A Crack in Time is another one of those Sony exclusives that is very challenging to emulate. Although it is not yet 100% stable, its performance has improved significantly compared to previous versions. During the initial test, the game crashed, but after that, I played it two more times without experiencing any crashes or major issues. In previous versions of this game, the emulator suffered from significant performance drops and constant crashes. The new 0.28 version has brought many improvements, and I would give it a playable status on my PC, as there is nothing that can hinder your gameplay. The game Ratchet Clank, Tools of Destruction has also shown a significant improvement in its performance and stability. During my tests, I was able to maintain the game above 100 FPS in less detailed environments and above 70 FPS during battles and particle-rich areas. In previous versions, many Ratchet Clank games, including those ported from the PlayStation 2, encountered various issues. Performance drops and frequent crashes were the most common problems. However, with the recent updates, these issues have been significantly reduced, providing a smoother and more enjoyable experience for players. Red Dead Redemption, one of the most anticipated games to test on the latest version of the emulator, still falls far short in terms of performance. Even with all graphical options reduced or disabled and the resolution set to the minimum, the game still runs at a very slow speed in cities and heavily vegetated areas. Although it can occasionally maintain around 30 FPS, this frame rate is not sustained for long. Some reports on the internet indicate that individuals with extremely powerful processors that support the AVX512 instruction set can achieve decent performance, including at 4K resolution. However, for the majority of users, there is still a long way to go before Red Dead Redemption is considered playable on the emulator. By next week, I will try to provide an updated comparison between RPCS3 and Xenia, the Xbox 360 emulator. This is the second game on our list that will receive a remake. Shadows of the Damned already had solid performance in previous versions of the emulator. At least in the initial areas of the game, it's easily possible to maintain a frame rate of 120 FPS. With the announced remake, we can expect an even greater improvement in performance and graphics, making it an exciting option for fans of the game. Another exclusive of this generation, which I had tested previously on emulators like Xenia and RPCS3, is Silent Hill Downpour. Back then, the game faced various issues on RPCS3, including graphical glitches and instability, resulting in frequent crashes. However, with the latest version of the emulator, I was impressed to find that the game can now easily maintain a frame rate close to our target of 120 FPS most of the time. It's important to note that during cutscenes, the frame rate is capped at 60 FPS. 
This improvement in performance will certainly please fans who wish to experience Silent Hill Downpour at its maximum potential. Skate 3 is another extremely enjoyable game. Previously, it was already in a playable state but faced stability issues, resulting in frequent crashes. Additionally, its performance was considered better on the Xenia emulator. However, with recent improvements in RPCS3, the game is nearing perfection. In the tests conducted, I found that the game consistently maintained a frame rate above 80 FPS and even reached our target of 120 FPS in some areas. Although many fans have requested Sega for a remake or remaster of this game, it seems that the company isn't very interested in that idea. We're talking about Sonic Unleashed, an exclusive game from this generation that was never released for PC and has problematic performance on RPCS3. When using this emulator, the game sometimes has satisfactory performance, but on other occasions, it becomes extremely slow, which doesn't match Sonic's characteristic speed. Despite significant improvements in recent versions of the emulator, the game still can't be considered playable. Even when reducing graphical settings like shadows and disabling motion blur, the game still experiences various performance drops. Therefore, playing Sonic Unleashed on RPCS3 doesn't yet provide the ideal experience that fans expect. The SSX series has been one of my favorites since the PlayStation 2, but unfortunately, I never managed to play the more recent sequels due to issues with emulators. However, I was pleasantly surprised when I tested SSX on RPCS3, as the game is extremely stable, running consistently at 30 FPS. I encountered no crashes, and everything worked as expected. However, I would like to mention that if you want to unlock the frame rate, the game may experience some stutters. Hopefully, this will be addressed in the future with a graphical patch. For fighting game enthusiasts, I can't forget to mention Tekken 6. Released on just three home consoles, PSP, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360, the PS3 version may not be the best, making the Xbox 360 version more preferred by players. However, when it comes to emulation, RPCS3 is the best emulator to enjoy the game, thanks to its superior resolution and stability. If you want to delve deeper into the Tekken series and discover the best way to emulate each of these games that were not released on PC, I'll provide a video in the card for you to get more information. And to wrap things up, we have one of the crowd's favorites, UFC Undisputed 3. This gem has undergone significant improvement. In previous versions, during fights, the game suffered from frequent slowdowns and stutters, making the experience less smooth. While there was already decent performance on the Xenia emulator, now RPCS3 runs this game flawlessly, maintaining a stable frame rate close to 80 FPS most of the time. Some slowdowns can still be encountered during fighter introductions, but during the fights, everything behaves as expected. And thus, we conclude our video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful in some way. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more updates on emulators. See you in the next video.